established Marquee Club was already showcasing bands that would become the virtuoso kings of progressive rock, like Jethro Tull, and Yes, fronted by vocalist John Anderson. I went to see Yes with 30 other people at the Marquee one night, and the guy next to me said, you know they're looking for a drummer. And I met John, introduced myself. He said, oh yeah man, yeah, give us a call, I'll come back next Tuesday, uh, we'll, we'll give you an audition. And I never called, you know, and I often wonder if I'd have called, what would my life, what would have happened to my life? Life in Yes, for jazz drummer Bill Bruford, was like this. And the group started as a cover band, like most groups do. And you start playing Beatles tunes and a couple of tunes by the fifth dimension, and like you would. And then we, we got bored and we'd extend the section. So well, it's quite good up to here, but let's stick in another bit here where it goes like rhythm and blues. All right, we stick that in. And then, and then the thing would get longer and longer until eventually somebody inevitably said, well, let's like make one up ourselves. John was a very keen listener, an absorber of music, a bit like blotting paper, you know, he absorbed music. He was mad keen on Sibelius and TV themes. He'd start singing things. He said, John, this is, this is the theme to Bonanza. And he said, oh, never mind, stick it in, you know. Yes, never said no. They stitched movie soundtracks to folk music, to modern jazz, to classical music, to TV food. <laughs> and the, the only people we didn't con uh, concern ourselves with, I think, at all, was the audience. If you couldn't make the London clubs, couldn't find progressive rock albums in the shops, and rarely heard it on the radio, you could, by the end of the 60s, see every band in one glorious drug-and-rain-drenched experience at a pop festival near you. <laughs> 